Hey everyone, Rare D Dash here, time for another Ruby Blind Commentary. And it's finally Ruby time again. Uh, yeah, I had to wait an extra week, but here it is, and uh, it's Volume 4, Chapter 4, Family. And uh, yeah, I'm hyped. This is. This is a very encouraging title and has me really excited to see what's in the episode. Uh, and just the fact that it's been an extra week since we've had Ruby, that also has me just hyped to see what happens next. Uh, I mean, there was a World of Remnant video apparently between this one and the last, but uh, oddly it never ended up on the Rooster Teeth channel, so I don't really know what I'm supposed to do there. Uh, but that's beside the point. Uh, Family. Uh, now that's a interesting word, an interesting title that's likely going to be the theme for the episode. Uh, and uh, it really does make sense as a theme because most of the characters right now are dealing with family. Uh, Blake is en route to meet her family, obviously, and maybe we'll do that this episode. That would be cool, meet some new characters. Uh, and Weiss is currently dealing with her family, and... Uh, We've met most of them. I would still like to meet the mother since she seems like she might actually be cool and actually more supportive uh, because she seems to be firmly on the other side of the family divide, at least judging by uh, Whitley and Weiss's conversation and uh, how the characters appear in the portrait. Uh, yeah, she seems like she's more on the winter Weiss side than the side with Jacques and probably uh, Whitley, judging by the little details, uh, though that's still not entirely clear. Uh, so if we meet her, that'd be interesting. If not, still more, see more of her and uh, see more of Weiss and the others. That would also be cool. I'd love to see more Winter. Uh, and then there's Yang, who is in this episode since she's the thumbnail for it, so that's great. I, I, I'm really glad for that. I honestly wasn't sure we'd get Yang two episodes in a row, but uh, I'm glad that we are because Yang, her subplot really is the one that I'm most interested to see, uh, which is probably weird since it's probably going to be the least action-packed, uh, since, I mean, she's not really ready for that yet. But... Uh, I just want to see how they approach this story of recovery and building her back up and just seeing her conquer these mental blocks and work past them and accept moving forward again because that's what it represents to me what she's doing now. I know a lot of people say, oh, she's rejecting the metal arm. I, I don't think that's what this is. I think she's uh, rejecting the idea of actually allowing herself to move forward and... Uh, I think eventually in time she will embrace that and will uh, just use the arm and decide that she's going to uh, continue on in her life and not just mope around and uh, let herself be the victim. Uh, and I, I think a lot of it is going to have to deal with her going out there and confronting things. I hope she doesn't go chasing Adam. That would be the worst idea, but uh, we'll see. I would like to see her come to terms with what her feelings are for Blake, obviously, since, uh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> if anyone thinks I'm stretching, I, I do really think that she has some pretty serious feelings for Blake. Uh, it it it's pretty obvious to me, but I know there are always going to be people who doubt that. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it does come out this uh, volume with her. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we'll see. Uh, finally, uh, there's Team Ranger, and they, they're the ones that don't really fit in with this uh, family thing so expressly. Because, I mean, Yang is with her father, her father still and all that, so there's the family connection there. But uh, Team Ranger, none of them are really dealing directly with their family now they're in Mistral and uh not really or well the kingdom of Mistral not really the city yet but I'll, uh, yeah uh, <laughs> uh but yeah none of them are dealing with family uh Jean we've heard little bits about his family but yeah they're nowhere around uh Ruby well I guess Crow is maybe following following her that might be what we're going for there though I guess we'll see um uh, and uh I, I guess maybe we might learn more about Nora and Ren's family, because, I mean, with how episode two went with uh, the 
the, the significant look there when they saw that symbol. Uh, it's looking like we might learn more of their backstory this volume, so maybe we'll learn about their family. That could be interesting, though I don't know. Uh, not really sure what will be included in this episode, but I'm sure it'll be pretty interesting, and I'm very excited to give it a look. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. And here we go. And yeah, this theme song is growing on me. <laughs> they always do. starting with oh starting with this guy okay finally gonna get an answer on who this is huh Okay. Oscar, you be careful with those tools. Oscar, huh? So, Ozpin isn't quite dead, but he's in some weird sort of state. <laughs> and Yang, having a dream. Oh, dreaming of Adam. <laughs> Poor thing. that Oh Who does Taiyang have over? Oh, the professor. Both of them? Yeah. Skirt. Uh, I was just a TA. I, I didn't know what to do, so I just I just left the room to laugh. <laughs> Yeah, we told him it was a kilt. He'd never worn a uniform before, so he didn't know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is terrible. What is wrong with you? Hey, the girls all said he had nice legs. I did that jerk a favor. <laughs> Besides, that's not even the best part. See, then we... Like what you see? <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see these two again, really. Good to see your laugh. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Uh, pull up a chair. Please pull up a chair. I'm good. So what are you doing here? 
Despite popular belief, teachers do have a life outside the classroom. Professor Goodwitch is working round the clock to restore Beacon to its former glory. But Mistral wasn't built in a day, and we all need some rest from time to time. Yeah, <laughs> look, let's not worry about that right now. So, there we were, standing in the auditorium, <laughs> looking at Crow wearing a skirt. <laughs> Then Oz tells everyone it's time to work on our landing strategy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Broadway twins have always been interesting, to say the least. That sure didn't seem to stop young Ty. <laughs> hey, come on, man. She's right here. Oh, please. She's a mature young woman. If she can handle combat, she can handle a few jabs at her old man. That's not the issue, Pete. And besides, she's still a teenager. She is also in the room and can be directly spoken to. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I've been through enough to be considered an adult at this point. Adult or not, you still got a long way to go before you're ready for the real world. Oh my gosh, does every father figure just have the same three condescending phrases? Yeah, but we only use them when we mean it. Is that so? As a matter of fact, it is so. If you honestly think that you're ready to go out there on your own, huh, well, I guess you lost some brain cells along with that arm. Wow, that's harsh. You jerk! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are we finally talking about the Goliath in the room? Yang, if you don't mind me asking, why haven't you tried on the arm yet? Oh, yes, yes. A piece of Atlas technology being given out like that is rare indeed. Not to mention the effort it took to deliver it here. It seems a great many people want to see you return to normal. I'm... scared. Everyone keeps talking about me getting back to normal, and I appreciate it, but this is normal now. It's just taking me a while to get used to it. Hmm. Well, normal is what you make of it. Yeah. What is that supposed to mean? Do you want me to just pretend like nothing happened? I lost a part of me. A piece of me is gone, and it's never coming back. You're right. It's not coming back. But that doesn't have to stop you from becoming who you want to be. You're Yang Xiao Long, my sunny little dragon. <laughs> Aww. You can do whatever you put your mind to. So whenever you're ready to stop moping and get back out there, I'll be there for you. Aww. Uh, I... Um... Fear is like any other emotion. It comes and goes. It's all in how you... Gotta love the port wisdom. Why, even I find myself wrestling with that emotion from time <laughs> to time. Really, you. He's afraid of mice. Oh. Only disease and <laughs> and oh, wow. Even get me started on their tails. So hairless, <laughs> simply unnatural. Paul, I assure you, you're safe. There's no mice here right now. Good night. It may be a while before we return. There is still much work to be done at the school. I hesitate to ask, but is there any word from young Miss Rose? Oh? Oh, from Ruby? Have you thought about going after her? Trying to bring her home? <sighs> I've got to look after some things. Yeah. And back to these guys. Assuming it's still there. Of course it'll be there. 
This one's supposed to be pretty big. He gan bana. He gan bana. It's a well-protected village with a popular inn. Which means no camping in the rain. See, everything's gonna be fine. You know, we've had a lot of ups and downs, but things could be a lot worse. I really thought we'd see more grim. As did I. I guess our luck is finally turning around. To Higan Bada! To Higan Bada! And there's a grim. And pro. So he's he's the reason there haven't been many grim. Stairs, red eyes. Said you oh? find bottom shelf. Thanks. But I went ahead and gave you top. Lucky you. <laughs> Crow is popular. Is it? Can't be. Not just all of a sudden. Yeah? Wow. Hello, brother. Uh, about the last character I expected to see. catch up with her family she can but you're not now how about we get on with it unless you plan on keeping these coming <laughs> does she have it did you know yang lost her arm that's not rhetorical question i know you know it's just obnoxious that you'd bring up family and then carry on like your own daughter doesn't exist. I saved her. Once. Because that was your rule, right? Real mom of the year material. Yeah. I told you Beacon would fall, and it did. I told you Ozpin would fail, and he has. Now you tell me. Does Salem have it? I thought you weren't interested in all of that. I just want to know what we are up against. And which we are you referring to? <sighs> you should come back, Raven. The only way we beat her is by working together. All of us. You're the one who left. The tribe raised us, and you turned oh. it back on them. They were killers and thieves. They were your family. You have a very skewed perception of that word. <laughs> I lead our people now. And as leader, I will do everything in my power to ensure our survival. I saw. The people of Shion saw too. The huh. weak die. The strong live. Those are the rules. Well, you've certainly got someone strong on your side. I've seen the damage. We couldn't have known the Grim would set in as quickly as they did. I'm not talking about the Grim. And I'm not talking about you either. 
If you don't know where the relic is, then we have nothing left to talk about. I don't know where the Spring Maiden is either. But if you do, I need you to tell me. And why would I do that? Because without her, we're all going to die. <laughs> and which we are you referring to? Okay. Fascinating. Make this one a double. Uh huh. Oh. Already trying it on. Okay. Let's get started. Okay. And there we go. Well, yeah, that was about the most surprising episode of Ruby I can recall in quite some time. Uh, nothing quite went as I expected, and uh, honestly, I expected this to be more Weiss and Blake-centric than anything else, just because their plot lines are expressly tied into the idea of family, with Blake going to confront hers or talk to hers or whatever. I don't really know how that all works so far, but... And then, of course, Weiss... Uh, just being with her family and having to deal with them and all that. Uh, I thought that was more where this was headed, but no, those two were nowhere to be found, and instead it was about Yang and her family, and, uh, yeah, Crow and Raven, which, crazy. Uh, and also, that opening scene, that was interesting, that was very very interesting. Uh, since the first episode, there have been so many theories circulating about who the farm boy was. Uh, a lot of people said, oh, he's one of the maidens, which seems to be uh, <laughs> the go-to hypothesis whenever Ruby fans don't understand anything. Uh, <laughs> just assume it's one of the maidens. Uh, which, I mean, maybe they'll be right eventually, but I never really bought into that at all. Uh, also didn't buy into any of the theories that he somehow was Osbin, though that was at least closer as it seems, because it seems like he's being set up as someone who's going to be interacting with Osbin, who somehow now seems to be a disembodied voice inhabiting a mirror, I guess, I don't know. Uh, it'll probably be, be it'll probably become clearer as we go along, uh, but <laughs> it's definitely interesting, he is not in fact dead. Uh, not exactly. Uh, so, uh, I'll be curious to see, to learn how that works. Uh, and then there was, uh, the Yang stuff in the episode, which was different from how I was expecting it to play out, uh, but I still liked it. I still think that this was effective. I was thinking that working up to Yang, trying on the arm, would take, uh, pretty much the whole rest of the book, that she would be just sort of building up the courage and just sort of taking the slow approach. I, went, I, I, I really didn't think that they would get her there in an episode, but uh, this episode, it did a good job of showing how she is still the same person, how she is still the person who does have this desire to press forward and get past it. And it is going to be difficult, but she had just a lot of good advice from three adults who are really good mentors and good people who uh, are just sort of pushing her in the way that she needs to be pushed and getting her to uh, just go on and move forward. And also, there was that scene with them leaving, and she's realizing that uh, she's realizing that she is holding her father back and uh, just sort of inhibiting him from going out there and searching for Ruby and being there for her. And uh, I think that is what really pushed her into making the choice and deciding to put the arm on. She doesn't want to be a burden. And uh, 
that's powerful, and I do like that, and I do think that this is going to encourage her, and maybe we'll see her start to train with her father to get sort of back in fighting condition, and then she'll probably go after Adam, which, I mean, I, I really think that's a mistake, but it probably is the path we're going towards, because, uh, yeah, that's, that seems like what she'd want to do. She'd want to prove that she's better, that she can surpass the one who did this to her and all that. Uh, I hope she decides to go after Blake instead, but I, I kind of doubt that's the route we'll take. Though I, I do still think that's coming eventually. Because, <laughs> I mean, it has to be there. Uh, it, it is there, but uh, it's going to come out eventually. Uh, and then uh, there was probably the most interesting stuff. Uh, I mean, it was all interesting, but... <laughs> Crow and Raven. I, uh, I really wasn't expecting to see Raven again, and the most we've ever seen of Raven. Uh, by, by a lot, really. I mean, she had the one scene where she didn't say anything, and then the one scene which was a dream. Uh, but now we see her, and she has a full conversation with Crow, and a fascinating one at that. Uh, it seems she's the leader of the bandits that attacked Shion Village, which I wasn't really expecting. I mean, some people thought maybe there was a white fan connection or something with the mask, though it always looked distinctly different to me, and I wasn't really sure that was that was the route we were going. Since I mean, I don't think she's a faunus. I mean, they are related to birds, so maybe, but I, I don't know. Uh, and... Yeah, it just seems weird. But she's related to this group that uh, is connected to Rin and Nora in their past. So that's kind of a bit of an odd uh, sort of connection that I never would have expected. But uh, yeah, and uh, Crow was really hung up on someone who apparently is involved with this tribe of bandits that Raven leads and uh, yeah I'm very much intrigued uh, and we also learned a bit more uh, the relic that uh, Salem mentioned in the last episode is apparently very important and uh, apparently it's really good that Salem doesn't have it <laughs> uh, but they don't have it either apparently so I don't know no one uh, I wonder where it is. I mean, uh, <laughs> and what it is, because, I mean, we have no idea. Uh, what else? It was a fascinating episode, really. There's a lot to say. Uh, good to see the two professors again. I mean, I already kind of said that, but they were fun here. That was a lot of fun, good, just lighthearted scene there, uh, for the most part. I mean, Yang sort of added a bit of heaviness, but uh, it, it was it was fun hearing more about uh, Crow's school days and all that. <laughs> tai Yang, he was great, showing a lot more personality. And uh, it, was, it was good just seeing more of these characters, seeing more Crow. I mean, Crow is awesome, and... Uh, he was great here, about what I would expect, and he's apparently making the job a lot easier for Ruby and Co., uh, which they don't even know, but <laughs> that's cool. Uh, though they could probably take a lot of those, Grim. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, it was just a really, really good, really satisfying episode. So looking forward to the next one. Kind of want to watch it already, but I'm going to wait until it's out on YouTube, like usual. Uh, just... I do want to see more Blake and Weiss now. I mean, uh, it's especially Weiss. It's been a, like two episodes now since we've even seen her, and uh, her plot really hasn't even been very firmly established. I mean, we know she's going to go and sing, but beyond that, uh, really, any sort of plot for her is kind of not really developed. We just sort of established who the characters that might be involved are. Uh, so... Yeah, want to see where that goes. And Blake, still really do want to meet her parents and her family and everyone in Menagerie and all that. Uh, but really, really grateful for all this Yang development, and I'm excited to see where that goes, and I'm excited to see where Crow and all that stuff goes. And 
uh, see more of Raven. Uh, I wonder if um, Team Ranger will, will will end up sort of confronting Raven's uh, crew in this season. That could be interesting. Uh, and it does seem kind of like we're going on that path since uh, the Ren and Aura thing. Uh, yeah, that'll be weird. Uh, especially since I don't even know if Ruby would recognize who Raven is supposed to be. I mean, maybe from the photo uh, that Crow has, she'd sort of recognize her, but uh, there isn't as much of a connection there, obviously, between her and Raven as Yang and Raven. So, <laughs> which I love the mother of, a, of the year line. That was great. She is a terrible mother. Uh, wow. But yeah, uh, good to see more Raven. Really hope we get to see her fight again, just because she is awesome. I mean, she didn't even fight, she just sort of intimidated Neo. Which, yeah, still wondering where Neo is, but uh, I doubt we'll be seeing her anytime soon, uh, somehow. I mean, I, I, I do think she's still alive and we will see her again eventually, but I would not be surprised if Neo was absent for all of Book 4, or Volume 4. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's a shame. And, uh... Probably won't be seeing a lot of characters for a while. I mean, I didn't expect we see the professors again for a while, though, so uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we will see some of the regulars and uh, just people we've seen before again. I would hope so. I mean, I want to see Team Coffee again. <laughs> though, I really have no idea how they would work them into the story. Uh, guess we'll see, though. Anyway, this was a lot of fun, and I talked, I talked about this for over ten minutes, so that just goes to show just how much I was excited by this, how much it really got me going, really got me just interested and invested and engaged and eager to see whatever is next and all that stuff. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the commentary. Let me know if you did and see you in the next one.